Hi, my name is Jeremy Hansen, co-founder of Seattle Makers, and today I'm going to show you how to assemble one of our laser-cut face shields. So these are made from 0.007 inch mylar sheet, uh, EVA foam for the for the top part, um, one inch elastic, some duct tape, and a couple of staples. First off, we're going to want to reinforce the top corners where the staples go. And to do that, we're going to tear off about a square of this duct tape. Take the straight edge along the top left corner, line it up with about half of it sticking above the mask. And this doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't line up. We're looking to just have the width of a staple fit in both sides. Next we'll do the other side. And I'm wearing gloves, which make it a little more challenging uh, because we're running a sterile uh, fabrication facility. We're going to have another video about that. And you can check that out at seattlemakers.org. Hold that one over. If you have a metal sheet, that makes it a lot easier. You can just tack both sides down and it doesn't keep curling up on you. Next up, we're going to take the smooth side of the EVA foam. Uh, this is 35 millimeters by uh, 200 millimeters uh, laser cut foam. And we're going to want to put tape on this side and then adhere that side to the mylar. Let me flip this around so you can see it. Uh, best way to find the center, you could print something out or mark lines in here, but you just have to find the approximate center. You're not going to really notice if it's a few millimeters left or right, and you can, you can kind of gauge it with, by feel. If you just find the edges with your pinky, line up what feels like the center right here, so both your hands kind of feel uh, symmetrical on either side. And then just line up that bottom edge and press down, and that's going to be stuck on there. You can bend some curve into this, and you might want to do that before the adhesive really sets up. Get a good curve in there. Um, it's going to bend pretty easily when you get it onto your face. And then the next step is to attach the elastic onto the back. So to do that, we're going to take our stapler, and we're going to overlap, again, about a square. So same as the height, we're going to overlap that same amount from the side. Um, we're on the inside of the mask, and we're going to staple so that the staples go down and point outward. So you have minimal um, catching surfaces um, on the side that's going to go next to your hair, which we want. Um, the biggest issue here is going to be it wanting to bend that way. So you want to start by just putting some force and pushing this into here. That's going to make lining this up a whole lot easier.
And then we'll do the same on the other side. This side wants to pull down from the weight, so it might be useful to prop that up and give yourself a little bit more wiggle room when you're trying to line this side up. And there you go. Here's our laser cut face shield. So if you'd like to contribute to this project, uh, volunteer, or contribute financially to getting these to as many uh, people as possible. We've ordered enough for over 5,000 of these masks and we're looking for community support. You can find more information on how to volunteer, donate your time, um, or contribute financially at seattlemakers.org. And you'll also find a number of other projects that we're working on to support the medical community and the community at large. We have a design for a hand-sewn face mask, and we're also giving out kits and accepting donations for these at Seattle Makers. Um, these also, we don't need elastic for them, so you can make them out of any type of uh, lightweight, tight woven cotton fabric. We have another style of uh, face mask here. This is the open source Prusa design. And this is a modification made by our own uh, John Lenoff. Um, this one actually accepts any type of band material, so it doesn't have to be elastic, which is in short supply. It can also accept twine, um, woven fabrics, uh, and really any, any type of material to um, hold that to your head. So if you'd like to print these at home and donate those, uh, we'll have a box out front for those as well. And then finally, we have a um, hands-free door opener made out of a uh, Home Depot bracket, like a, just a metal bracket. So we've bent this and, and ground it so that you can put your foot on the inside of the door. Once the latch is disabled, you can use your feet to open and close the door without having to touch the doorknob. So you can see all that and more at seattlemakers.org. I hope this was helpful, and thanks for watching.